Hello everyone, and welcome to another Cyan Orange Duel. This time, we're going to take a closer look at two free art programs for PC, Krita and Metabang Paint. Previously, we had Metabang Paint face off against Ibis Paint X on the iPad Pro, and it turned out victorious. Now, Metabang Paint has to test its might against the powerful Krita, a free illustration software we were quite eager to test out. Before we begin, let us show you the specs of our PC the one we will be using to test out each software. We will leave all the important specs of our PC on screen, and keep in mind, we will be using Windows 10 for this duel. So, without further ado, let's begin! As usual, let's begin introducing each of our combatants. On one side of the ring we have Krita, a free software for PC that specializes in digital painting. The history of Krita is quite peculiar. You can even trace its origins back to 1998, even though the software was actually named Krita in 2002. They had to change the name over an IP problem after its original name, Crayon, had a copyright issue. What's really interesting about Krita is that it is a free licensed software. That means it has a GNU GLP license, which means General Public License. This means that the software is open source, which allows users to even contribute to the project as testers, programmers, or simply as artists. Krita has its own foundation called the Stitching Krita Foundation. This foundation allows users to donate to the project and in general be in touch with the developers to form a community between artists. Now then, on the other side of the ring we have Metabang Paint, but this time it's the PC version. As we had mentioned in our previous duel, Metabang Paint is a Japanese free software developed by Metabang Paint Inc. The company was founded in January of 2014, and they released Metabang Paint for the public for the first time in December of the same year. Metabang Paint was originally created as a platform for artists to be able to share their work online more easily. Metabang specializes a bit more in comics than Krita, and as we mentioned before, it also has a version on the iPad Pro. You can check that out in the previous duel right here. Now, let's begin our duel by taking a closer look at the design each software has. Let's begin with Krita. When we open Krita, we find a very standard gray colored menu that offers the expected options of creating a new file or canvas. Once we open this menu to create a new file, we can set up the size of our canvas, the resolution, and other elements. Krita also has many useful presets ideal for animation, comics, or photography. We decided to create our own file since we will actually be illustrating in the software. We will work on the same file in each software, a file of 3000 by 4500 pixels with a 300 dpi resolution, which is more or less a standard file we work on in Photoshop. The interface of Krita is not very different from the one Metabang uses, or even Photoshop's. On the left hand side, we will find various tools such as the Move tool or the Bucket tool, and on the right side, we will find, as usual, the Color area and the Brushes and Layers section. When we opened Krita, the first thing we did was adjust the interface to what we normally use in Photoshop. We were able to reposition the windows and all, but we also noticed Krita actually has workspaces you can also use. There is even a workspace ideal for animation, but since we are going to mostly paint, we decided to go for the one called Big Paint. Now let's take a look at Metabang Paint. When we opened Metabang, it was not very different from Krita, with a few differences that are important to mention. Here is the menu, where you can create a new file to start painting, but as you all may have noticed, yeah, it has ads on it. Unlike Krita, Metabang actually has ads in its interface, but that's not all. Metabang also has a section dedicated to contests and one dedicated to tutorials. If you're a Metabang user, you can also create an account, and you may be wondering, what's this account for? It's quite simple, honestly. Creating an account also allows you to submit your work to their online galleries as well as participate in their contests. You can also navigate additional brushes and materials from the cloud. Following our tour of Metabang, let's see the new file menu. Very similar to Krita, but as expected, it lacks an animation section. So yeah, you can't really animate in Metabang Paint, but you can create comics and illustrations, which is what we are really interested in. 
Metabang does have some useful presets as well, for both standard illustration or comics such as letter size or A4. Metabang also lacks the option of workspaces, but since you can move around windows in any way you like, that option really is not necessary. To conclude, both sides have a nice and clear interface with an aesthetically pleasing dark gray color. It is easy to navigate in both programs, and nothing really stands out as a potential winner here. Now, the decisive battle has arrived. It's time to draw and test out both softwares and explore the possibilities each program offers to us artists. First of all, we wanted to check out the configuration settings of each program and how much it allows the users to optimize it. From a first impression, Krita clearly has the upper hand here. In Krita, you can set up as many of the same settings as in Photoshop. For example, you can tweak the undo history memory, the RAM settings, and even the max file size of your painting and its cache. In both programs, we can also set up the pressure sensitivity of our tablet and configure the shortcuts for our keyboard and tablet. As we mentioned before, in each software, we're going to do a quick painting using a file of 3000 by 4500 pixels with a res of 300 dpi. Now before we get started drawing, we also adjusted the shortcuts and everything we normally use in this section, such as the Control z command, or changing the brush size with one of our radial dials on our tablet. Krita allowed us to set up most of the shortcuts we used, so no problem there. Alright, let's begin talking about the most important thing for us artists, the brush. Krita, in theory, allows you to import brushes with the extension .abr, which is the one Photoshop uses. However, when we tried doing this, it didn't work. But this was not a problem at all, since we think Krita has amazing brushes. Yeah, we tried many of the program's brushes, and they were pretty good for what we needed. We barely had to adjust them, and some helped us do hair, for example, in a much easier way. Our tablet also behaved very well with Krita. We never had a pressure sensitivity problem or anything like that. We were able to draw the sketch without any issues, and the software had a nice, smooth performance, which we really appreciated. We also explored the other tools in our drawing process, such as the transformation tool, the bucket tool, and the selection tool. Krita also has rulers very similar to the ones you can find in Photoshop. Now let's talk about the layers in Krita. Krita has a very nice number of blending modes such as color dodge and overlay. We love using those. The blending modes behave the same way as in Photoshop. We didn't notice anything different in particular. We also tested the clipping masks in Krita. We don't normally use those kinds of masks for a simple painting such as this one, but we tested them anyway. They behave the same way as in Photoshop. You can also use them in this program. But as much as we loved Krita, we do have a couple of cons that we thought were important to mention. The first con of Krita is its version of Liquify, the famous adjustment filter that Photoshop is well known for. Krita does have it, but its performance was quite bad in our opinion. We first started using the tool without adjusting it, and it was terrible. We tried to dig for info on how to properly optimize it, but it doesn't seem to help much. No matter what we did, the tool didn't behave well. We even flattened the painting to a single layer, thinking our file might have been too much, but it didn't seem to improve its performance, to be honest. So we ended up not using Liquify to adjust our painting. We actually used the tool Warp, which behaved pretty well, and allowed us to adjust what we needed. So in conclusion, Liquify is not something that we would recommend in Krita. Photoshop is way better in this regard, so yeah, it's skippable. Another problem we had with Krita that maybe some of you can actually help us solve is the option to have two windows of the same file and have one of those windows in the other screen to better visualize it. We tried to Google this problem but found no answer, and we were also not able to undock this window from this sidebar. Another problem we noticed in Krita were the filters. Krita has the most important filters you can also find in Photoshop. However, these filters had performance issues specifically in the preview. These issues might not affect some of you, but they were a bit annoying to us, as we sometimes want to slightly tweak the contrast or the hue of our painting. In general, Krita was awesome, and it is a free software, so that makes the amount of the great tools it had even more impressive. We tested the text tool, gradient maps, vector layers, and more. But keep in mind, we didn't try anything regarding animation, as we are not animators, and our knowledge about that field doesn't really fit in this review. Last but not least, you can export your file in various formats, including the beloved PSD of Photoshop. Now let's take a look at Metabang Paint. 
In the same way as in Krita, we started setting up our workspace, starting from the interface of the program to the shortcuts of the tablet and the pencil. We didn't see any way to create a new window for the same file, but Metabank has the navigator window, so we ended up using that as our additional preview for a canvas. As Sonia was setting up the workspace that she uses in Photoshop, she came across this particular window called References. And as the name implies, you can use this section in Metabang to load your reference pics. Though we tried to load many images, we noticed this section only allows us to upload one reference picture at a time. That means if you have a mood board with many images, it will be best to first save that file into one image before loading it here. It can be a bit useful to some artists, but for us it seems a bit meh. We know Pure Ref is way better at this and is also free. Now, when we were setting up our shortcuts, we were able to map most of our favorite commands but one. The famous Photoshop command, Control shift alt e a command that allows you to merge all layers into a new layer. A very useful command in our opinion. Once again, if you know how to do this, let us know in the comments below. It will be very much appreciated. Before we start drawing, let's take a look at Metabang Paint's brushes. When we examine the brush library, we notice Metabang has a cloud where you can import all types of new brushes into the software. You can also import bitmap brushes and those with the script format. You can also create brushes imported straight from your canvas, something we didn't see possible in Krita. Unfortunately, there's no way to import brushes from Photoshop, meaning the .abr format. If you guys really want your Photoshop brushes in Metabang Paint, you will have to manually create them either by using the canvas or a bitmap file. Alright, now let's begin. As usual, we will work with the same conditions and draw something very similar to keep it fair. In the sketch phase, we started using the pencil brush and we really liked it. The brush was very good for the initial sketch, as well as the render phase. However, as much as we tried to continue using Metabank Paint, the software has three issues that unfortunately made us stop and switch to Photoshop. Two of the problems we will mention next are not so bad, but the third one was the one that made us stop, especially since it greatly affected the color phase. Number one, even though there is an excellent brush called Pencil and it had no performance issues, Metabank paint brushes are in general just okay. None of the brushes were as amazing as the ones Krita has. For example, we were unable to find a flowy brush that would help us with the elements such as the hair or fabric materials. We are not saying they are bad, they are just not as good as Krita's brushes. Number two, okay, so many of you won't find this a problem but it was an issue we stumbled upon while working on our drawing. Since this drawing has two characters in it, we decided to have each character in a separate group. When we tried to move both groups while selecting them at the same time, for some reason Metabang was only moving one group. When we tried to move both groups while selecting them at the same time, for some reason Metabang was only moving one group. We had to eventually fix this by grouping both groups into a single group, and then the software allowed us to move all of its contents at the same time. We know it's not a really bad problem to punish the program for, but it is something Metabang has and something Krita doesn't. Number 3. Alright, this is the problem that made Sonya stop using Metabang and eventually switch to Photoshop. As we mentioned before, shortcuts are very important to us and the shortcuts are also there to help you in your drawing process and make things feel faster and smoother along the way. We use one of our dials in our tablet for the brush size, for example, and in Krita, we had no problem using the shortcut as the brush size changed as expected. However, this was not the case with Metabang Paint. In Metabang, for some reason, using this shortcut to change the brush size is incredibly slow. The brush size does increase and vice versa, but at a slow pace, it actually affects our drawing process, forcing us to click on the screen to alter the size the way we wanted it. And as you probably figured out by now, that is bad. A shortcut that forces you to click on the screen is just not serving its purpose of speed. It's just a waste of a command, and sadly, we couldn't withstand this in the color phase. Are there other ways to change the brush size? Yes, but this is the one we like the most, and in Krita, as we mentioned, the shortcut worked perfectly. In conclusion, Metabang Paint behaved well and had a very good standard brush called Pencil, but the brush size problem was really bad for us, to the point of forcing us to switch back to Photoshop. We also exported the file to a PSD to work in Photoshop, and the color changed dramatically when we opened it. Pretty much we had to work from scratch in terms of color. Our duel continues. Now it's time to talk about the performance of both softwares. 
As we mentioned in our previous battle, we tested them out working on a file of the same specifications, and we try to keep both drawings very similar in terms of layers, style, and techniques. Overall, both softwares performed very well in our opinion. Only minor issues to report in both programs. We did notice some problems here and there, but nothing major that would hinder our creative process. You might be wondering, what is the point of this battle if both programs are free? Well, yes, technically it's a draw here, but we wanted to share with you guys the methods both programs used to sustain themselves. Even if they are free, they need money somehow to keep them running, right? With Metabang, the answer is easy. As we opened the software, we noticed the program has ads on its interface. On the other hand, Creta sustains itself with its foundation, which pretty much means donations. You can join the Creta Foundation and donate, share your work, or even work with them as a tester or developer. We tried to look into a way to remove ads on Metabang Paint, something its iPad version has. However, we noticed there is no way to remove ads on its PC version. And it's a bit strange to be honest. But oh well, the ads are never present when you're drawing, so it's not really a big deal. Alright, at last we have reached the end of our duel. Both Metabang and Krita are great softwares, and it's very impressive that both are free. The qualities and tools they both have will satisfy any digital artist, and you won't have to pay a single dime for them. So, now it's time to answer the question of our duel. Which of these free art softwares for PC is the best one? Yes, both softwares have a clean interface that is easy to navigate. They use dark gray tones as well, which is very easy on the eyes. Nothing really makes one stand over the other in this regard. Even though Metabang Paint is an excellent art software, it had a couple of flaws and one in particular we could not forgive. The shortcut we used to change the brush size was rather useless in Metabang Paint, forcing you to click on the screen to get the desired brush size. Krita, on the other hand, was excellent. It did have some flaws, but nothing really that bad in our opinion. In Krita, we finished our drawing, while in Metabang Paint, we chose to finish the color process in Photoshop over the flaws we already mentioned. Both programs didn't have any lag issues while drawing and performed excellently in our opinion. Another draw. Not surprising, right? Well, as the title of the video says, both softwares are free. One uses donations to sustain itself, and the other uses ads on its interface. The ads are never present when you are drawing, so we consider it a draw in this regard. Finally, it is time to crown another winner. Which free art software, and let's remember this is for us illustrators, is the best for PC? Krita is the winner! Krita is definitely the king for us illustrators, who are looking for the best of the best, keeping in mind this software is free. But honestly, both softwares are really good, and can help any artist out there who wants to do a comic or simply draw for the pleasure of it, without having to worry about an investment. Thank you all once again for watching and joining us in another Cyan Orange Duel. Don't forget we also have a Patreon. You can support us there and receive exclusive content such as illustrations, comics, wallpapers, and more. Don't forget to subscribe for more of our content and to like the video. If you also want to be notified about our future videos, go ahead and click the bell down below. Thank you once again and see you in the next one.